Hello, my name is Dr. Sabri from NIH. I'm nuclear radiologist, and it is my pleasure to present to you basics of radiopharmaceutical therapy by emphasizing the deposited dose and bystander effect. I have no relevant conflict of interest. Radiopharmaceutical therapy is a mechanism to deliver radiation to the target cells through a molecular mechanism utilizing a targeting molecule, a linker, and, and a chelating agent. As you can see in this schematic uh, graph uh, depicting the principles of theranostics, we have a binding motif which a linker attached to that and then we have the opportunity to attach either a diagnostic radionuclide or a therapeutic radionuclide as we have in uh, neuroendocrine tumors the gallium 68 here is for diagnosis and lutetium 177 for therapy or as you see in this schematic the gallium or fluorine radionuclide could be uh, the radionuclide of choice for uh, diagnosis and a lutetium-177 um, for therapy. One way to conceptualize the disciplines that are dealing with therapeutic aspect of ionizing radiation is thinking about the position of radiation source. Is it controlled by physician? as you see in this uh, graph for external beam radiation, or it's determined by the biological system. Examples of um, radiation in therapy, which is controlled, the source controlled by the physician or the therapist is either teletherapy, external beam radiation or brachytherapy, insertion of the radiation seeds um, inside the body, but the position of those seeds are determined by the uh, uh, physician. In contrast to those two conditions, radiopharmaceutical therapy the radiation source is injected to the patient and the final position of the radiation source is solely controlled by biological system. So when the source of radiation and the position of that source is controlled by a clinician, most of the time radiation oncology is taking care of treatment planning. While in radiopharmaceutical therapy, the biological system is taking care of the final positioning. It's very important to look at the name, radiopharmaceutical. It has two components. The pharmaceutical means it has an important component of pharmacokinetic, the distribution and final positioning of the radiation source. And the bio, the radio aspect of that mentioned that pharmacodynamic aspect of the medication or the therapy is by radiation effect. So again, to emphasize the importance of the radiopharmaceutical property, we should understand the source position is determined by the biological system. Therapeutic effect is by radiation and radio, radiobiology. It's neither pharmacotherapy nor external beam radiation. It has a component of both. Which component from the pharmacotherapy is here? The pharmacokinetic, the distribution in the body. But what component of radiation therapy is here? That is radiation effect um, of the a therapeutic agent. Let's review the properties of radionuclide which we use in uh, radiopharmaceutical therapy. 
the beta particles are electrons and the major and most important radionuclide with predominantly beta emission are lutetium-177, yttrium-90, and iodine-131. Compare the weight of a beta particle to the weight of alpha particle. Alpha particle is 7,400 times almost heavier than an electron. If you consider an electron be the size of an apple or the weight of an apple, alpha particle weight could be at the level of a medium-sized car. So you see the magnitude of the difference in the mass. Compare the linear energy transfer of the beta particle with the alpha particle. Alpha particle deposit much more energy in the magnitude of 100 to 200 times more than the beta particle. And that create a alpha range, alpha particle range, which is much shorter than beta particle. An alpha particle usually travel 40 to 100 micrometer. If you consider an average cell size of 20 micron, that means two to three cells. Compare that with the beta particles and the range of 100 to 10,000 micron, which is uh, about 10 millimeter. Much larger and many cells will be affected by the range of the particle. Let's look at the differences between different radionuclides with beta emission. Particularly, look at the difference between the lutetium-177 beta range, which is almost half a millimeter, to yttrium-90, which is 2.5 millimeter. That is the average range. These ranges are important if you look at the histology and microstructure of the tissues. Here you see microstructure of the kidney. Pay attention to the distance between the Bowman capsules and the convoluted tubules and the loop of Henle and the scale of these. So half a millimeter versus 2.5 millimeter is meaningful and relevant. In addition to position of the radiation source, there are two major differences between external beam radiation and radiopharmaceutical radiation to the tissue. In a temporal scale, we are dealing with a very low dose rate. Radiopharmaceutical therapy dose rate is 0.01 to 1 gray per hour. While in external beam radiation, the dose delivery is much higher. We deliver 2 gray of dose in about 1 minute, which will result in the rate of 120 gray per hour. In a stratactic approach for radiation therapy, this dose will be multiplied by two to four times. So compare that even with the brachytherapy. Low dose rate brachytherapy is about two or less than two gray per hour. Compare that with the radiopharmaceutical therapy with the dose of 0.01 to 1 gray per hour. Another difference is a spatial scale. In external beam radiation, you have relatively uniform delivery of dose to the tissue, while 
in radiopharmaceutical therapy, the dose is very heterogeneous in a spatial domain. And that has a very important implication. The effect of radiation on cell is through DNA damage. Double-stranded DNA damage either gets repaired, which results in the cell survival, or the misrepair will lead to cell death. In radiopharmaceutical therapy, the radiation source will attach to one cell, as you can see in this graph. The cell that which is adjacent to the radionuclide, receive the radiation directly. While the radiation from the radionuclide will have a crossfire effect, the other cells that are not directly the target of that molecule will also receive radiation based on the particle range and um, as we discussed before. In addition to crossfire and direct effect, we have a concept of bystander signaling and radiation effect. What is the meaning of that? When radiation hit one cell, inside that cell, the double-stranded damage and other cell injuries will result in apoptosis or necrosis. But it's not just that cell that's affected by this interaction of radiation and cell. All the microenvironment will be affected. The cell itself will signal the macrophages and the immune system and consequently orchestration and a cascade of the cy cytokines will result in activation of the immune system in the tumor microenvironment. Not only that, but the signaling of the cell to the neighbor cells will result in a cascade of events with particular apoptotic um, consequences. Unlike direct effect, which in which we have a dose and effect relation across all the spectrum, for bystander effect, we, we, satur we have a saturation of the effect. And that makes radiopharmaceutical therapy a very unique modality to use the bystander effect. As we discussed before, the dose rate of the radiopharmaceutical therapy is totally different and much lower than the external beam radiation. So the bystander effect is exactly at the range that maximized by this dose rate. Here you can see the difference between external beam radiation and homogeneity of dose deposition versus heterogeneity of the dose in radiopharmaceutical therapy and the potential for the microenvironment to accept immune cells and also maximize the bystander cell effects. In this graph, you see after injection of the radiopharmaceutical in the blood and delivery of the molecules to the cell, not all the cells are the target, but the environment is very appropriate for activation of the immune cell. And as you can see here, the cell itself 
after apoptosis, expose the macrophages with the antigens, and those macrophages will turn to the an antigen presenting cells, activating the T cells, and those T cells will come back to the microenvironment and act as a tumor cell killing agents. These are all possible here because not all the cells are killed by homogeneous high dose radiation. And after therapy, it's not like a post radiation desert. It's more a fertile microenvironment which attract the immune cells to get trained by exposure to the uh, tumor antigens. As a historical note, the concept of abscopal effect introduced in 1953 by Mole et al. And in that case, radiation uh, to the tumor in one side of the mouse led to regression of the untreated tumor on the other side of the animal. This uh, phenomenon uh, was received with lots of skepticism, but um, throughout the years, radiation biology showed in certain conditions this abscopal effect could be very effective. Particularly in the case of radiopharmaceutical therapy, because of the dose rates and spatial heterogeneity, this bystander effect is very essential. And there is a great opportunity in the future for synergism between immunotherapy and radiopharmaceutical therapy. What is dosimetry? After injection of patient with radiopharmaceutical agent, as we said, the final position of those molecules is determined by the interaction of the molecule and the biologic system. It's not in the hands of the uh, physician who inject the dose. But we can measure and image the final position of these injected agents. In this case, it's a case of metastatic paraganglioma and you see multiple lesions in the abdomen and thorax. After treatment of this patient with lutetium dotatate, the day after, 48 after, and 72 hours after uh, the therapy, we have the SPECT. And by SPECT of the patient, we capture the gamma emissions of the lutetium-177. These, these images gives us the capacity to measure the deposited dose. How we can do that? So as we discussed, we have multiple images in different time points. Then we look at the organs at risks and the tumor, delineate them. As you see in this graph, if you measure the activity of radio and radionuclide at each time point in each organ and put them in a graph, then you can fit a curve, either exponential, bi-exponential, tri-exponential, or more sophisticated curves and calculating the area under the curve. The area of the, under the curve gives you a quantity which we call time-integrated 
activity. This time integrated activity is essential to calculate the dose in tumor as well as the organs at risk. As a note, you may need to be roughly familiar with the MERT formalism, that is, medical internal radiation dosimetry. If you look at this formula, this part is time integrated activity. As we said, it's an area under the curve of activity at the source. RS means region as a source of radiation, and RT means a region as a target of radiation, and the D means the dose. So if you want to read this line, you should read the dose to the region, the targeted region from the region as a source is equal to time integrated activity of the region of the source multiplied by a coefficient which determine the relation of the region of the source and the region of the target. The, the whole dosimetry is much more complicated than this, but this elementary uh, formalism of the MERT is something that you have to know um, for uh, board. So for that sophisticated multiple time point imaging and dose calculation, the future is a um, combination of um, artificial intelligence and advanced quantitative methods to uh, make the whole process more uh, streamlined, particularly for the segmentation of the organs at risk and the tumor and fitting the curve and calculation of the dose and comprehension of all the um, other aspects uh, for the therapy. Of course, dosimetry has uh, many limitations. The micro level dose is non uniform as we talked. The lesions might be too small um, and the image could be affected by partial volume effect. We have very few data points and we should extrapolate a, a curve on that and fit to the model. There are lots of uncertainty and, um, and it might affect the accurate dose measurement. But we have to remember, without dosimetry, our treatment efficacy could be severely affected. Let's review the literature on uh, what happened to uh, selective internal radiation therapy by glass or resin radioembolization of the liver for treatment of the cancer. 2017 study combining three major trials showed an astonishing result. There was no benefit in adding CERT selective internal radiation therapy to Falfox. Very interesting and perpuzzling result for interventional radiology and the field. This year, another phenomenal study, those sphere, revealed that with appropriate dosimetry and dose planning, we can show benefit of the CERT in addition to the chemotherapy. The effect which was not visible and 
dominance when we use standard dosimetry as one fits all approach. Those sphere trial clearly showed, in spite of all the difficulties and limitations of the dosimetry, if we don't plan for appropriate individuation of treatment in each patient, we may minimize or completely eliminate the therapeutic effect of these measures. To summarize what we said, we should review the principles of radiopharmaceutical therapy and understanding it is neither pharmacotherapy nor radiation therapy per se. It's combination of both from pharmacotherapy, we have pharmacokinetics, and from the radiation therapy, we have the radiation biology and interaction of the ionizing radiation with matter. So we have to combine the two, and that is the power of this modality. It's not external beam radiation because the source is not in our control. The source of radiation is determined by, by the biological system. The temporal domain, we have low dose rate. And in a special domain, we have heterogeneity. These three are the three major differences with external beam radiation. What's the difference with pharmacotherapy? The pharmacodynamic here is radiation effect and radiation dose, either by direct or by standard effect. We reviewed the direct crossfire and by standard effect, and uh, reviewed how dosimetry could be performed conceptually and why patient specific dose prescription is essential. Thank you for your attention. If you have any question, please contact me. I'll be happy to be of any help.